Christ. I'm excited this morning to be able to have uh, my nephew come. And he's here with me on the platform. And he is going to share with us a song that he wrote. Um, Matthias is originally from Eswatini. He was born in Swaziland, which is what we called it before the name was changed to Eswatini. And um, he just has an amazing story. And I'm going to let him share. He and his mom are here with us. They're missionaries in Africa. Uh, she adopted uh, Matthias in, in Africa while she was there. And um, she has a table at the top. And if you have any questions or comments, you can please feel free to stop as you leave this morning. And so, Matthias. Thank you. Um, I, feel, I feel privileged to be able to share what God has done in me this morning. Um, I'm 16 and uh, I was adopted by my mom when I was nine months old, around nine months old. And she's been there for the past 26 years. And um, when I was around two months old, I'm, my biological parents left me on a sidewalk and left. And so I've grown up knowing that story and I just haven't really processed it a lot until the last few years. And it's kind of come up and realizing that I had a lot that I needed to deal with regarding that. And um, just struggling a lot with the idea of why and how could they walk away? And why would they leave me there? Like not having a lot of questions that probably won't be answered. Um, just wondering, did they not love me enough that they felt that they had to leave me or just not knowing the situation behind that and just struggling and realizing that I had a lot of bitterness that I was holding against my biological parents and anger and unforgiveness that I needed to let go. And um, God has just been working and moving and realizing number one, that even though the enemy has told me that my identity is in what my parents did in the fact that I was thrown away or left there and that's all I'll ever be. And then God confirming in my mind that no, I had a plan even through that and I can make the, the mess beautiful. And also um, letting go and forgiving my biological parents for what they did because God wants to do so much through us but we can't be used to our fullest if we're always holding on to the past because unforgiveness just is handcuffing us to the past. And most of the time, when we're holding bitterness and unforgiveness towards someone, it will hurt us way more than it hurts the person that we are choosing not to forgive. And just, my, I feel like my life has been, there's a verse in Psalms 113, verses 7 and 8, and it says, He lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage dump, and he sets them among princes, even the princes of his own people. And it's just, God has been so prevalent over and over again in my life to um, protect and to heal and transform. When I was um, a baby, I, when they first tested me when I was just a few months old, I tested, I need to raise this. I tested positive for HIV and AIDS, but that was before I made my own antibodies. And so once I started making my own, I tested negative. And I also had tuberculosis, but then I've been healed from that, I guess. And just so many things in my life um, that God has continued to show himself. And um, one of the ways I've had my healing and part of my forgiveness process is writing this song. And when I first wrote this song, it was, to me, it was kind of like, this is as personal as I can get. But God kind of showed me that even though other people's stories, keep falling, other people's stories, um,
um, while other people's stories may not be specifically my story, this song can be kind of used as a way for other people to uh, start their forgiveness process. Because we all have someone that we need to forgive in our lives, someone that we've been hurt by. And it's not, forgiveness is not easy by any stretch of the imagination. And it's not an overnight thing. It's a choice and it's a process. But once we allow God to, to be, once we give it to God, let whatever it is go and begin our process and begin our healing. It's, forgiveness isn't easy, but it's worth it. So I ask that as I sing this song that I've written, um, that you just ask God to show you if there's anything that you need to release to him and let go of.
Thank you, Matthias. And as you can know and understand, we are quite proud of that young man and proud to call him family. And uh, He has been traveling with his mom while they've been back in the States and he has been sharing that song on numerous occasions and it just has a way of speaking right to the heart. And um, if you're here this morning and it's touched something in your heart, know that we have a Father in Heaven who is listening to you as you cry out to Him. And He can bring to you the same transformation that He has brought even to Matthias and to many of us who are here today. It's hard to switch gears after that, but for those of you who do have offering, we do have the black boxes here on my left, your right, on the post, and then on the tree if you'd like to give. Um, but we also want to um, just go to the Lord in prayer this morning and um, just like to ask you if you would just to pray along with me as we pray and just bring your needs before the Lord today. Father, we thank you today that you have helped each and every one of us to realize that regardless of what we've been or where we've come from, we have a purpose and a plan. And you can bring that to reality in each and every one of our lives. And so as we sat here today, I pray that your Holy Spirit would be real to each and every one of us, helping each of us to know that we can be forgiven and that we are loved and that we will also then be enabled to live the life that we may think is impossible for us to live. And I pray that you'd help those sitting here today to reach out in faith and claim that promise for themselves. And may each and every one of us go away today knowing we are changed. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to welcome you uh, today to Overflow Church, whether you're in person at Reclamation Church or worshiping at home. Uh, we're glad that you're here. And uh, today marks a, the beginning of a new chapter. Uh, September is always a, the beginning of a new season. Tomorrow is the last major holiday before um, we, we get into this fall season. And I'm excited about what God is doing and, and the opportunities that we have to be the church. Over the next several weeks, uh, we've got three more weeks that we're going to be in the park, and hopefully it's warm into October, but we're not going to chance it. Uh, but we're planning on meeting here in uh, at Valley View over the next several weeks. And over these next several weeks, we're going to be talking about, okay, what does it mean to continue on this path that God has set us on. Next week, uh, John Shawley is going to be here sharing, and we're going to be able to have an official uh, commissioning for Reclamation Church, and just excited about what God is doing there. But if you've been to Overflow for several years, you know that even those of you that have been at Overflow from the beginning, you know that our vision has never changed. The calling that God has given us as a church family has been the same pre-COVID, through COVID and post COVID. Nothing is changing. We're just having an opportunity to reimagine what does it mean? We have said from day one that we didn't believe God was calling us to be the largest church in town. We, we, we've said our goal was never to, to see how many people we could gather in one place. We were never going to measure our success by how many people gathered on Fifth Avenue in that building or how many people gather in this park. But we were going to measure our success by our capacity to walk with individuals as they discover who Jesus is, begin to grow in their walk with God, and then begin to hear the voice of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit speaking in their life as they say yes to God. And that we want to help them go wherever that is. For some, like the Shawleys, it means um, moving to Coldport and being a part of Reclamation Church. For others, it 
Matt, like the Sims just a few weeks ago as they moved um, to Plano, Texas. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited. After this, I'm going to go on Facebook and uh, Josh Sims is preaching at this moment while we're gathered. He's preaching in Texas and on Facebook live. And so I want to watch that later. But we've said from day one that our goal, the thing that we believe God is calling us to do is to take an active role in rechurching this area. I don't know about you, but every time I drive down 7th Avenue right now, I find it kind of depressing. Every day, a little bit more of that Lutheran church gets crumbled down and crumbled down and crumbled down. While the church is not the building, the buildings do remind us of the influence that the church once had in our city. And the presence of God as he worked in and through his church. And I'm praying for a day that we don't lose any more kingdom space in the city, but we actually begin to see God move in new ways across this city. And so last, um, in January of 2019, we shared with you our 2030 vision. And I just want to give us a little bit of an update of where we are and where we are moving into this next year. We said it was our, that we believe God was calling us by 2025 to see 10 new churches started, by 2030 to see 25 new churches started, to see 50 launchable leaders. And those are leaders that, that, that have a call of God to start something new. And so some uh, might answer the call to go and, and be a pastor. Some might start a ministry reaching into uh, a new community um, 250 disciple makers, 25,000 gospel conversations, and we believe that by 2030, God's going to give $1 million through us to bless this region and the world. And so just a little bit um, of an update, but before I give you an update, I want to tell you a little bit about where we're going. You see, we are in a storm right now, but God is moving. Like God is moving in powerful ways. And I, the the longer that we are in this pandemic, the more and more that I am becoming convinced that God is giving us an opportunity. He's giving us an opportunity to reset habits in our life that have got out of rhythm and, and given us an opportunity to be the church and the people that he's called us to be all along. We might be in a storm, but God is moving and walking on the water. My dad said that we only reported six gospel conversations this week, but what he didn't say is that someone walked across the line of faith this week. And God is moving and God is working. As we enter into this next season, and we've been talking a lot about micro churches, and, 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 I, and I wanted to take a little bit of time to just explain it hopefully in a more practical way to help you even understand how it fits into the 2030 vision because the reality is is that this pandemic has given us an opportunity to speed up that process of what it looks like to multiply into 25 congregations across the region but micro churches were always a part of the vision they were always a part of what god is calling us to now i do want to apologize for those that are on the wings Or uh, I just realized we're technically in a cathedral right now because it's shaped like a cross. Sorry for the confusion. Um, (laughs) uh, But those that are on the wings, you might not be able to see this picture. Now this is what is referred to as the mobilization flywheel. You see, we live in an age in, in, in our nation where the, where the church isn't as healthy as it, it has been in its past. And, and, and while we are starting some new churches across the country, most of the way churches start right now in the U.S. are this. They go to a seminary and they say, okay, who graduated? Can we find a pastor? And they bring them in and they start a church. And, 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 but the reality is, is if you look at church history, that's not the way churches started across church history. And, when, and, and, and this is the thing that we as Americans often forget. Like we live in a country where the church is struggling, but we're struggling during the greatest awakening the church has ever experienced. The church around the world is exploding and God is moving in powerful ways. But you know how the church expands? 
is through this little, what is called the mobilization flywheel. You see, we, we right now, we are a church. We are overflow as a gathering of, of individuals who are following Jesus and being changed and transformed by Jesus, walking in step with the Holy Spirit and allowing God to move. As churches, we have a responsibility to walk with individuals as they learn to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We have failed as a congregation if all we have done is gathered a group of people in a room or in a park that, 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 that want to hear, hear some great music and someone talk to you about what they read in their Bible this week. I have failed you as your pastor if I become content with simply getting more and more people to come and hear whoever's preaching this week. And, and, and if, if you're not growing in your walk with God, you're not... You're missing something about what it means to be a follower of Jesus. You see, as the church... We have a responsibility to make disciples who make disciples, to lock arms with individuals and walk with them as they begin to read their Bible, as they begin to spend time uh, reflecting on how God is speaking to them. Over the last couple months since we've been doing the banding together journal, I've kind of changed my approach to journaling. I'll just be honest with you. I'm not a journal. <laughs> uh, words do not come naturally to me. Um, and for the longest time, uh, my journaling consisted of writing prayers. And I don't know if there's anybody else out there that uh, doesn't like to write. Every time I journal a prayer, I'm like, why did I write that down? I could have just said it. <laughs> like, and it's just like, it, it just seemed like a pointless exercise. And so for the longest time when I, when I would journal, it, would, it just felt like such a meaningless endeavor. Now, I'm not knocking anybody that like, you love words, you love English, and, and that's how God works. Like, that is great if God has gifted you and wired you that. But that's not how he, he wired me. But, but over this last year, as we've been going through this banding together journal, and I want to let those know that uh, if you've been reading along, we're back in September. Uh, the way this journal works is that uh, uh, September to May, we read the New Testament. Uh, every year and each summer, we read a quarter of the Old Testament. So if you've been reading along... Um, but one of the things that I've started doing this year that has just been incredibly helpful is that the, the only things that I'm journaling right now are those impressions that I'm hearing from the Holy Spirit. Each day, I'm, I'm purposely setting aside time and just say, okay, God, what, what are those things that I just know that I'm supposed to do? What are those impressions that I just feel over and over and over that it's like, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't know about you, but like, sometimes it's like, okay, God, are you like a broken record? Because it doesn't matter what passage you read. It's like, well, this is what I want you to do. And you're like, well, maybe I ate some pizza that was bad or something. And it's like, I don't know if that's really what God is speaking to me. But I found it incredibly helpful and convicting to start writing those things down because when they start happening day after day, week after week, you start saying, maybe God is speaking to me. Like maybe he's been speaking to me all along. Maybe, maybe he has been inviting me into this relationship with him and he wants to speak to me and he wants to talk to me. And, and, and I'll be truthful, like 
One of the reasons, like, and, and, and this is something that I came to several years ago is that I just came to this realization that there had never been a point in my life where, where, where God wasn't speaking to me. There was just a lot of points in my life where I didn't like what he was saying. And so I want to challenge us. as a church family, that we have a responsibility of walking with individuals as they learn to hear the voice of God. You know what? I'm doing a better job at listening and responding to the voice of God than I was 10 years ago, even five years ago. But my goal in life is not to just simply get to a place where, 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 I'm just so intimate in my relationship with God that I've lost track of all other people. Each of us have a responsibility to lock arms with individuals and help them as they too begin to hear and respond to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And so we have said as a church, our primary responsibility as a church family is just creating an environment where you who call overflow home are coming to a place where you're encountering God on a daily basis where you're spending time in God's word and 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 whether it's five verses or a chapter whether it's the banding journal or whether you're just reading the bible like I don't care But something powerful happens when individuals begin to respond to the prompting of the Holy Spirit in their life, begin to engage God's word, begin to spend time in prayer, lock arms with other individuals who are doing the same thing. You know what? Those are the people in our church family that every time I turn around, they're like, God told me to do this. And God told me to do this. And like, I saw God do this. And like, can you believe what God just did? And it's just over and over and over. And so as a church family, we're continually raising up and mobilizing missionaries. So those in the back, this M stands for missionaries. And while we love each and every one of you and we want you to be a part of our church family, what we want more than that is for you to say yes to God and whatever that looks like. Now, where do we go from there? Now, now this is something that truthfully, when, when we started eight years ago and, and we began down this journey, this is something that I didn't fully understand. You see, when, when we started this process and, and even when we moved to Aljuna and we, we, we began sensing that God was calling us to be take an active role in reaching the 290,000 people in our region. I didn't understand the role that gatherings would take place in this. You see, a gathering can be... We've been talking about microchurch, and, 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 and microchurch, again, is not a term that defines the finish line. It's, it's, not, it's not like house church. House church says this is never going to be bigger than a house. Microchurch defines what are those 10 elements that must be essential if this is to be called a church. Now, a gathering is a gathering of believers or, or individuals that are on a spiritual journey to discover who Jesus is. And a gathering has one or two or maybe three elements of what it means to be a church. You see, we've gathered as a church family, but the reality is, is that each and every Sunday now, I don't know if you pay attention but anywhere it's printed and anytime I talk about this, we talk about a worship gathering. This is not a service where we're serving you. This is a gathering where we are gathering together as followers of God. And as we get ready for this next season, what, is, what essentially is taking place is that we have... We are in beginning in October, we're going to be multiplying 12 gatherings. 
12, ga 12 worship gatherings across the region. There's gonna, as my father said, there's going to be two at Overflow's building. One it, it, it is going to be uh, Overflow's worship gathering geared for a smaller group of people, uh, simply because we realize that in this season, there's going to be a smaller group of people. One is going to be a family worship experience. It's going to be it's going to be geared so that both the kids and the adults will get something out of it. We can't do Kid City like we used to, where you just drop your kids off. But if you come as a family, we can structure a worship gathering that's going to connect with both the parents and the kids in the same experience. And guess what? God has the ability to speak to the kids and the parents in the same gathering at the same time. I'll never forget, there's very few times in my life where, I, where, where it was just undeniable God spoke to me. And just for clarification, I've never heard God speak audibly, but there were some times where I questioned it. And, and, and I'll never forget the, the, the one experience where God spoke so clearly to me. It was while I was in South Africa and... Um, my friend was preaching in Zulu and I couldn't even understand what he was saying. I don't even know what he was talking about. But in that moment, God got a hold of my heart and I knew, I just knew the answer to things that I've been wrestling with, that this is what God wants me to do. And so gatherings begin all over. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes a gathering might be a group of individuals at your workplace that, that, that have started a Bible study. I've I've said this before, and I'm going to keep saying it until it becomes normal practice in Altoona. I am far more excited when you come to me and say, I've started a Bible study at work than when you introduce me to a friend here at Overflow. We are going to do our best to communicate in a way that people encounter Jesus. But if people don't encounter Jesus and are transformed by him, doesn't matter how many times they show up on Sunday. And if you really want to see your friends encounter Jesus and experience a life transforming power by him, ask them if they want to read the book of John together. And this is where the mobilization flywheel begins to take place. So here is a circle we just looked at. Gathering, or churches, missionaries, gatherings. Some of these gatherings will birth new churches. Some of these gatherings will connect back into the body of the church that they've always been a part of. And I want to make this distinguish as dis, uh, distinguish this distinction as we move into this next season. And and one of the questions last week is how long are we going to be in this micro church season? Well, well, here's here's the here's the reality. It's really up to how God is speaking to you. From day one, we have said that, that the only thing we're asking of you is to say yes to God. We are not a church in the business of telling you how to live your life. We are a church in the business of asking you to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and say yes to him and go wherever that is. And, and no matter where God is calling you or how he, he wants to work in and through your life, we want you to say yes to that. And here's what's going to happen over this next year is that, that starting next month, there's going to be, I think it's four gatherings that are going to be in public spaces. And there's about eight gatherings that are going to be in homes across the region. Three of these gatherings that are started, we already know that when they go in October they are going to eventually grow up to be their own church. We've all, next week, we're commissioning Reclamation Church. Reclamation Church simply started by John and Maggie saying yes to the voice of the Holy Spirit. 
God put them in Coldport and he began to break their heart for Coldport. And you keep saying yes to God enough times and all of a sudden you're like, oh my goodness, what did God do? And while we love John and Maggie and the role that they played in our church family, the reality is, is that more than Coldport needs godly Christians driving down the mountain to be a part of Overflow, Coldport needs followers of Jesus that are gathering individuals, making disciples, and helping them continue to reach the community of Coldport. One of the things I'm excited to announce today is I just confirmed this week that the group that's been gathering at Izzy Park over the last 18 months uh, will be launching a micro church at the new Arts Altoona building in, in, in uh, the the fellowship hall of the Simpson Temple building. And uh, they're, they're gonna be gathering. And here's the cool thing about what God has done there is that that simply started by, by Matt and Jess saying, what does it look like to love our neighbors? It was a backyard club that started at Izzy Park that grew and last winter they, they, they moved into Providence for the winter and did Alpha and then they've been back in the park. And, 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 and here's the, Here's the crazy thing about the way God works. <laughs> Somewhere in the North American church, we got this idea that if I lead someone to Christ, they belong to my church. But that's not how it works. Yes, yeah, sometimes we lead someone to Christ and they connect into our local church. But when you study what God is doing outside the U.S. and you see where the church is exploding, you know what the first question is? It's not, okay, now you plug into my church. The question where the church is growing the fastest is, who are your friends and family that you need to share Jesus with? Is this supposed to be a new church? Or is this supposed to be a church that's connected? Or are these individuals connected into the existing body? And where the church is growing the fastest is where the church is continuing to have the conversation. Okay, what is God doing? And, and one of the things that's been cool to, to watch with the group that's gathering in Izzy Park is, is from a very early age, they began to talk about that as church. And we would be wrong as a church family to judge their success by how many people walk into our doors or into our park. But on the other hand, if we say, what is God doing here? And now we're able to celebrate the birth of a church that, that, that will one day grow up to be a fully functioning member of the city church in Altoona and will be a sister to Overflow um, rather um, than a part of us. Also starting in October, I'm excited uh, Pam Townsend has been uh, a part of the Hope Drop-In Center and has, has worked extensively within the mental health community. And, and, and beginning in October, this is something that was coming long before COVID, but COVID has given us an opportunity to speed up that process, but to start a church for those within the mental health community, bringing them together and giving a meaningful worship experience that they will be able to be a part of a fully functioning body of Christ that's geared for them. And the rest is still up in the air. I believe that over the next year, many of the, those gathering in homes, once we get through COVID, they will begin again rejoining us in our building. But, but here's, the, here's the thing that we're totally okay with. is if God has other plans, we're gonna celebrate that too. If, if some of these gatherings grow up to, to be a church, we're gonna celebrate that. If some of these gatherings connect back into Overflow Church, we're gonna celebrate that. My challenge for each and every one of us is what is God asking you? Where, where is he calling you to be the church? You see, it's an incredibly unhealthy experience to simply move from church to church to church because you're looking for a better worship experience because I've got news for you. 
every time you arrive, you realize that the problem isn't always somewhere else. The problem is within. But I do believe with all of my heart that as individuals grow into maturity and they begin to hear the voice of God, there is a shuffling. That sometimes God will say, you know what? I've called you for a specific purpose, for a specific reason to live out your calling in this place. Just as we sent Josh and Stephanie to Texas to be a part of Scent Church, and just as we uh, we commissioned Abby and Evan to be a part of the vineyard here in Altoona to be more active in the calling that God was calling on them, we are a church in the business of helping individuals answer the voice of God in their life. So before I close, I want to read two passages that I've been thinking, or I've been meditating on a lot over these last several weeks. But the first one is from John 14, 16 through 17. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and it doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives in you, lives with you, and later will be in you. And in chapter 16, 5 through 7, it says, but now I'm going away to the one who sent me. And not one of you is asking where I'm going. Instead, you grieve because of what I told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Because I do, if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. Now... If I'm honest with you, if there's any scripture verse that like I've always struggled with, it's that one. I don't know about you, but I thought it would have been a really cool to live 2,000 years ago. Like, I mean, going and visiting Israel right now and walking in the footsteps of Jesus kind of sounds cool. But actually being there, <laughs> to be there in the crowd when he feeds the 5,000 to... Witness his death and resurrection. I mean, can you imagine what it must have been like to have been one of the 500 who saw Jesus resurrected? To be there when he raises Lazarus from the dead. And yet, some of the last things Jesus said to his disciples is that it's better that I go. If you are a follower of Jesus, you have the presence of the Holy Spirit in you. If you have placed your faith in the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross, you have the presence of the Holy Spirit in you. It's not something you have to worry, wonder about, worry about. Scripture is clear God's pursuing you. He desires relationship with you. The gift that we have been given as followers of God is not heaven when we die. It's God now and forever. We have the presence of the Holy Spirit speaking. But I wonder how much time you're taking to listen to him. How much time are you spending each day expecting that God's going to speak to you. I've had enough conversations with individuals to know that there's a lot of people in our community and across our nation right now that are spending more time listening to the spirit of this age than they are listening to the spirit of the Holy Spirit working in them. Because you do know that 
The Spirit of the Holy Spirit brings peace. He brings joy, love, happiness, gentleness. That's what He produces in our life. Not fear, not stress, not depression. And so I ask you, are you taking time to read your Bible? I've brought the banding together journals. Uh, and if either you got two options, maybe you like journaled so much and you're not like me that you actually finished it. I, I've been journaling, but I still got some space. So I'm going to keep using this one and you need to pick up a new one. Or maybe this is the first time that you're saying, you know what? I've never had a regular habit of just spending time in God's word, spending time in prayer. I want to encourage you that let this be a year. We're, we're, we're in the midst of COVID. It's not over. But I'm becoming more and more convinced that we have an opportunity to reset some habits. And if you had an opportunity to read my journal, you would find that, 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 uh, the things that I just keep over and over and over just sensing from God that this is a season about resetting my rhythms and my habits. Because I'll be honest, for a long time I was going way too fast. And right now, as we've entered into COVID, COVID did not slow things down. COVID has only multiplied my job responsibilities. And yet the longer we go in COVID, the more and more I'm realizing that the most important thing I can do is prioritize my time with God. Taking time to listen. Taking time to reflect. Taking time to look back and be like, oh my, like God's been convicting me of this several weeks now and I, I just keep putting it off because maybe it's not really the Holy Spirit speaking. But no, you know what? If I'm honest, I know what the Holy Spirit is speaking. And I, want to, and I want to say this. As we enter into this season, like, like some of you might, maybe, maybe you're here discouraged because, because um, you hear stories about um, Josh and Stephanie or Matt and Jess or John and Maggie. And it's like, I've never heard the Holy Spirit speak to me like that. I've never, but you, I, want, I want to give you one bit of encouragement. For five and a half years, before we moved to Altoona, I was the outreach pastor at the Hyde Wesleyan Church. And for literally four years, Clearfield was the only place I ever told God I did not want to go. It's the only place in the whole world I will go anywhere. There's not a country that was off limits. I will do anything. I will go anywhere. And Clearfield was the only place that got in like, that is the line, like circle it, get me away from there. Um, and for four years, the only thing I could get from the Holy Spirit is bloom where I planted you. That's it. <laughs> Just be obedient where I put you. And I'm like, God, but I didn't want this. I had other plans. I wanted to do this and this. And it's like, I see God speaking to them and I see God speaking to them. And why aren't you just telling me what, I can, what I'm supposed to do? And the only thing he said over and over is just bloom where planted you. I know some have heard us talk about microchurch and, and, and maybe, maybe you've heard us talk about microchurch and you feel pressured to gather in a home. Well, you know, we're, we're not doing microchurch because we need you to gather in a home. We're making space for people to gather in a home if that's what God's calling them to do. If you don't have a specific calling to gather in a home and you really feel like the building is the best place for you, we've got space for you there and we want you there because that's where God's calling you. We want you to be where God's calling you. We want to just continue to give a space for people to say yes to God. So in closing, where... 
are we at as we enter into this next season? Maybe some of you have noticed that some of these uh, symbols have been colored in to represent what God is doing. I asked uh, Chris D'Antonio, who is our treasurer, for an update on how much we have been able to funnel through our congregation since January of 2019 that, that has gone to, to, uh, to love our community over the last two years, the things that we've done to love the people of our community, the faith promise that we've given. So some of that is, is serving our missionaries in other places, and, and we got missionaries in uh, Dearborn, and we've partnered with the church in Mozambique, and... Um, the Jesus film in a variety of different places that we've partnered. Uh, some of that money has gone to help with launching Celebrate Recovery with Reclamation Church, with the backyard clubs that are happening across the region. Um, but as of to date, we are at $46,000 that God has funneled through us to bless those outside of our church family, which is pretty amazing. We've reached 4,058 gospel conversations. We now have 38 individuals who, who have grown to a place in their maturity and their walk with God that they've locked arms with someone else. And, and I want to take a moment to just celebrate a little bit of what God has been doing behind the scenes that people weren't even aware of. Do you realize that in February, so this is the month before the world ended. In February, for the first time, time in the history of overflow we actually had more people in discipleship during the week than we did on sunday if you count all the gatherings and all the discipleship for the first time in february right before covid and everything got crazy and it's i don't even know how you keep track of everything right now um but we started seeing weeks that we had more people that were being discipled and i'm far more excited about that than the number on sundays We've had 12 launchable leaders, and as we enter into this next season, there's three microchurches that are going to grow up to be churches. Reclamation Church, uh, and then with Pam Townsend and um, Matt Burns and John Wixon working together with the, the, the church that's starting at Izzy Park. And so God is on the move. And as always... My only request is that you take time to listen to the voice of God and say yes. And we as a church family are here for you. We want to walk with you. We want to help you experience the voice of God in your life. And we want to commission you to be the church. Father, we just come before you. Grateful that even in the midst of the storm, you have the power to walk on water. Father, grateful that in the midst of a storm, we can be people that are marked by peace, joy, love, gentleness. Father, I just pray for each and every one who calls Overflow home. I pray that you would give us a greater sense of your presence and that you would just continue to change and transform us into the people that you desire us to be. Father, I pray that we would be people who are known for our ability to love people that are different than us. For our ability to sit down and listen to someone uh, who sees the world very differently than we do and yet love them anyways. To love them as you do. I pray that you would just continue to give us peace of your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So go be the church this week, expecting to see God move.